Fort George, Ellen. The former junior senator from Virginia had it all. He had a great reputation. He had a meteoric political career. And he had the momentum to propel him into the Republican presidential nomination in 2008. And then this happened. My friends, we're going to run this campaign on positive, constructive ideas. And it's important that we motivate and inspire people for something. This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is, he's with my opponent. He's following us around everywhere. Poor Georgia. You see, one feature of electoral politics in the 21st century is that if you're the candidate, you are followed everywhere by the little worker bees of the opposition who are doing nothing but filming your every move. They're looking for full pause, they're looking for mistakes, or in this case, really just a motherfucking howler. <laughs> All right? Because Makaka comes, everyone went and sort of looked in the OEB and Wikipedia. Well, it comes from Macaw. It means monkey. And the person who shot this video, S.R. Siddharth, although he's a Virginian by birth, his parents are from India, so he has a very sort of South Asian cast to his skin. And apparently, according to George Allen, if you have brown skin, you look like a monkey. So, Siddharth took his tape recording, and what did he do with it? He uploaded it to YouTube. And he told his friends, who told their friends, who told their friends. And on and on and on. And poor George Allen watched his sure bet for re-election to the Senate, the stepping stone he needed to get him to the White House, implode under charges of racism. And really, he couldn't deny it. Now, the selection pressures on political candidates, which were already pretty intense, because they're under the full scrutiny of the media, basically 24-7. And that's the mass media. And you think about what happened to Howard Dean in 2004 with that infamous scream that cost him the presidential nomination. Those forces have ratcheted up suddenly, exponentially. And so that's because in the 21st century, we're all armed. And I don't mean that we're all armed with guns. Or we're armed with weapons that are much, much, much more potent. Just a decade ago, half of the human race had never made a telephone call. In October, according to the best figures available, half the planet is going to own a mobile phone. Now, if that seems like a first world extravagance to you, I think the poor people of the world want to or need to own a mobile phone. I need to tell you a little story. For thousands of years, fishermen in the Indian state of Kerala have taken their boats out onto the Indian Ocean. They've thrown out their nets. They've hauled in their catch. Set their sails to the markets that are on shore. And as is normal in this sort of thing, too many boats might land in one port, and there's too many fish for sale because fish don't last, they're gonna cure them, and so you might have an overabundance of fish in the market, and so the fishermen hardly get any money for that fish. And some of the fish gets wasted. Meanwhile, there's another market that's just a couple of k's away, and that market doesn't have any fish at any price. Well, that used to be the way it is now. The Kerala fishermen call when they're offshore, Mobile phone service extends about five kilometers, and they make a couple calls. Oh. Hey, uh, you need a, okay, good, we'll be in. And now all of a sudden, all the markets in Kerala have basically just about all the fish they need. Everyone can get the fish. The fishermen are getting a fair price for it. In fact, the mobile phone, which basically costs them about a month's earnings on their boat, is paid for in two months. Now, there are a lot of examples like this. 
Kenyan farmers call ahead to find out which markets are going to have the best prices for onions and maize. And it goes on and on. And it seems that when you enable people with far-flung networks, all you really have to do is just give them the device. They spontaneously self-organize. They make themselves more efficient. They make themselves more effective. And they earn a, a little bit more money to help pull themselves out of the cycle of poverty. And this was not predicted by anyone. All right? It wasn't expected by anyone. Most of us are still going around thinking of mobile phones as being uh, technological accessories. They're glitter. They're glam, right? But really, they aren't just the artifacts of a decadent Western lifestyle. They're tools. They're tools for communicating. Just like writing, broadcasting, blogging. They help people to help themselves. And they do that in unexpected ways. So the power of the data network, when it gets multiplied by the power of the human social network that we're all carrying around between our ears, it's placing an enormous selection pressure. When you bring those two things together, it's explosive. It's placing an enormous selection pressure on all of our human cultural institutions. And you can see this because, in this case, it's affecting the essential institution of civilization, the market. That is probably the one thing we can all agree on was the first thing that they had in a village. It is a market. But of course, it doesn't really all end there. So. Oh, I have slides in wrong order. We're gonna have to deal with that. So, Several of you have heard me rabbiting on about my new smartphone, which is right there shooting me. It's my super phone, it's a Nokia N95. And I love it for a lot of reasons, but I bought it for one reason in particular. And we're gonna see if we can actually get through to this other reason. All right. So Anna and I will kill the TV, but they'll do it really slowly. And this means that we have a course in treatment for TV, you have to take extremely powerful drugs for at least six months before you can really officially be said to be clear of the TV. <coughs> now that's video of my talk on Thursday night that was shot on my mobile phone. All right. For the geeks in the audience, what it's doing is it's shooting NTSC near DVD quality, and it's really the first phone that's capable of doing that. Now, why do I care about that? I want you to think. 7705, which is the date of the London tube bombings. The first photos of the London tube bombings were available not on the BBC, but on Flickr, because someone in the tubes had snapped a photo and then mailed that photo via the GPRS network up to Flickr. It had been posted and then later broadcast on the BBC. And if you think about the footage of shots being fired at Virginia Tech, in April, that was also footage that was shot on a mobile phone, and then emailed to CNN. And then there's this rather more unpleasant coverage. Let's see if we can go back to it. Okay. Can you hit the back? Stand up. Stand up. We're gonna get taped again. Stand up. Get up. Get up. You stand up. Don't do that. Stand up. Get up. You get taped again. Go. Get up. Stand up. Get up. Get up. Up. Stand up. Pass up. Art comes Stand up. Get up, 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 get up